All right, so we are figuring out our type placement. It's also called type setting. And what you'll notice is that I did a lot of work in the last video, kind of arranging these letters, all as different components. And that's what I started with, right? So in some ways it doesn't seem like that's a lot, but it is, it matters a lot in terms of the spacing between the space they're taking up, um, how it relates to the edge or going over the edge or behind the edge of your spot illustration. Once you like it, it's still not finished because this is all rasterized. So you see how wavy it is. You see how it has this outline built on top of it, you know, that can be turned on and off. And I like it thicker. So what I'm going to do now is bring this into Illustrator. So to do that, I turn off everything except the black type that I want to keep. So I turn off my illustration. I turn off the other words because I'll get to those later. But right now I just want to make a logo type of this, a clean kind of vector of this. So I'm going to save it to the desktop and I save it as a copy, and I'm just gonna save it as what I call a test file. So I put test at the beginning of the name because this is transitional. And I'm gonna save it just as a JPEG. Doesn't matter if it's a JPEG or a PNG, but it should be a flattened image. Turn all this back on. and then save my work because now I'm going to leave Photoshop and I'm going to go into Illustrator. So I find my test copy. Here it is. Mark it gray. I'm going to right click and say open with Adobe Illustrator. So if you clear every layer except for the type that you want to make a vector of, you save that as just a JPEG, but call it test. Don't overwrite your file. So then when you open up that test file in Illustrator, it's just like when we vectorized your line art, right? It comes in as a raster file. You know, it's pixel based. Doesn't really matter how clean it is because we're going to click on it with our large selection tool in Illustrator and then click on properties and go to image trace. And what do we want? We want black and white logo. It's the only one I'm going to teach you. <laughs> and then you want to see the advanced options, which you can see here with the image trace panel, or you can see it under window with image trace. Um, you're doing this only bringing in your text? Yes, and I'm only bringing in my okay, first so word. Like yep, so that I now have will have a basically a clean vector black type that I can put into my poster at full resolution. So now that I'm in the image trace panel, I need to click on this drop down for advanced and I need to say ignore the white and it does this it brings it in with white even if you save it as a PNG with the background turned off I'm not sure why but you just always have to do this ignore the white and then to clean it up just like we did with your line art we can look at it and I actually don't mind that it's a little wavy and hand done looking but I don't want it to be quite so bumpy so I'm going to say fewer paths, and that should smooth it out, sure enough. But I don't want it too smooth, you know, and it just depends what you're doing. But that looks pretty good. Because I want it to look like, like, somewhat like tattoo inking, but with a little bit more power because it's on a poster. And then I'm noticing some inconsistencies that I can fix but once that looks good to me I'm not going to overthink it I'm just going to hit expand and that's going to turn it into a vector so then I use my small selection tools and I can see all the anchor points remember image tracing gives you quite a few anchor points so really play with those settings and you can do it multiple times until it gives you closest to the vector you want once you're here Sometimes you can use some of these vector tools that we learned with our logo 
to be very helpful. So for instance, if you get the rounded tools, you can use those with your small selection tool to round some of these corners, though I think there are too many anchor points for them to be super effective. So what's the easiest way to modify your type? For me, it's the pencil tool. So I use my tablet and one thing I notice is my K has like these really, really sharp serifs, horns on it. All the others are nicely rounded. So that's the first thing I'm going to take care of. This is modifying existing type. So I'm going to use my small selection tool so I can see the anchors. Then I'm going to use my pencil tool. And I'm going to set that pencil to be more smooth than accurate. And I'm going to start on the path, redraw, and end on the path. It's like magic scissors. Rounding those out. Then I can see, do those look better? Yep, and more like the others. So let me keep going. I'm on the right path. You can always do Command Z. I can always kind of fix little things with my pencil tool along the way, little bumps. Maybe I want to give this foot, I cut it off, but maybe I want a little bit of it back. I cut this one off, maybe I want a little bit of this back. So it doesn't look too conspicuous. I want to round this one. around this. So image tracing is never perfect, but it doesn't need to be. This gives you an opportunity to customize it. Now what just happened there is I didn't fully land on the path. I started on the path and then I landed just short of it. So it created a brand new path. So I'm going to hit command Z and try again. Start on the path end on the path. It takes some practice. You have to be fairly precise. And then I can also notice that the bump is always in the middle. And then here it seems like it's really not in the middle anymore. That's with the distortions I was doing. So I'm going to redraw that. Put it closer to the middle. Fix that edge. You can dip it down. And then these points. You can modify as much as you want. You can have a lot of fun with this. And when I was first learning this as a graphic design student, I got kind of giddy with the power. <laughs> because everything's a clean vector. So let me show you what I mean. So if I wanted to just do something kind of funky, because this is a logo type basically, and I just wanted to change this to being a loop that goes like this, I can't. Hmm. Right? This is your own type design. There you go. Now, if you have all your letters up, you draw them all over at the same time. So I have done that in the past. The problem with that is then when, you're late, when you go back to the poster for layout, because there's so much space between my different words, it really doesn't give me any options. Like when I start to add color, like an offset behind or strokes, especially because I have the, uh, the I and the N floating on top of my illustration, and I'm not quite sure how it's going to look yet. I don't want to lock in those proportions yet. So I'm going to do them as individual words. In this case, it just, it's kind of case dependent on what makes sense. You're never wrong to separate them out, but that might be not necessary. Now, I'm always saying this with you guys. We're learning. We're getting exposed. We're not getting paid for this work. So try not to be too perfectionist. Because type is one of those things 
where if I just want to round out everything perfectly, it's going to take a long time within Illustrator, and it's never going to be absolutely perfect. And if you actually look at typefaces, if you actually load typefaces into Illustrator and then, then do what's called create outlines and see them as vectors, they are not perfect. There are always little blurbs and blips in them. Okay, so once you have it, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think because the K is shortened on that tip, I think I might want to shorten the W on this tip. Shorten that foot a little bit and put that bump more in the middle. Let's fix that. So we're making our own type here. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then I'll put this bump just a little bit more in the middle. Good. Okay. So now that I'm happy with it, I say in the layers, this is very basic. It's just one vector for each letter. And then I have the little like inside of the, the O, which is kind of cool, like the eye of Sora on there. Tiger's eye. This is also where you can adjust things like kerning and adjust. So if I wanted like to play with the R, for instance, I select that. I use the large selection tool and I can do things like stretch it, rotate it. shear it, do different things, you know. Though I like doing those kind of compositing things in Photoshop a little bit more than in Illustrator. But you have, you want to just always be thinking about that. So this is the arc it's making. I think I want to thicken the bottom of that K. I'm being a little nitpicky, but just showing you all the things you can do. So I'm going to use the pencil tool again. I'm going to drop it down to there. All right, so once you're happy with it, on a deadline, always, we're going to say file, and what do we save it as? I'm going to save it onto my computer. We want it to be able to be moved back into Illustrator or into Photoshop. So what's a portable vector format? And it's not AI. It is like ESP, but it is EPS. Yep. So to the desktop, I save it now, my test file, as an EPS. And because I'm going to have multiple ones, I'm going to then go to my desktop and I'm going to rename this work. <laughs> this is what I do by naming my type files. So there's my work EPS. Then I don't even need to save it with an illustrator. I just go back to Photoshop and I drag and drop that work EPS in. It comes in the middle and I just put it right over my type. And then I'm going to place it. It's going to be a smart object. And it will actually have a slightly different black. It's hard to tell on the projector. But Illustrator does what's called a CMYK black versus an RGB black. So it's a little bit brighter. We can always fill that with an RGB black. But it's fun to see the difference between your raster version and the vector version. I'll turn my raster version off. I'm going to mark that as green. So that's my first type setting. Looks good. All right, next. What kind of background is it going to be on the letters pop up? It just it depends because you're going to have a background poster. It's good to have an offset, right? Just like for our line art. Okay, so when you brought it from uh, Photoshop over to Illustrator, mm -hmm. you had 